photographers. Are you focused on focus and exposure as the two variables for photography? Uh, unless you're shooting monochrome, there's a third, color science. And even monochrome could have a color tone. Uh, color science sometimes seems like a dark art. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me show you the what and how. So you can control the Fujifilm X-S10 to reproduce color accurately or to express your creative instincts. If you need to start with focus or exposure, I've put links to my videos about those in the description. In this video, I'll demonstrate and explain the settings that manage the colors in your images. I'm using firmware 1.02, and I could easily geek out over this, but I'm going to do my best to speak English and provide a novice level understanding with an emphasis on what to do, but including some background to help your understanding. Uh, that means those who are expert may find this trivial and wish to discuss my generalizations. I look forward to doing that in the comments. A color science starts with white balance. It plays a larger role and has more capabilities than you might think. And then we'll look at Fujifilm's film simulations, which make Fujifilm's color science unique. Then advanced manual controls to make your images unique. And finally, the XS10 filters. The settings that we're changing here are applied to JPEG images. Raw files are recorded straight from the sensor before the camera applies these settings. With raw files, you can make similar adjustments afterwards in the camera or using your photo editor. And most photo software has more color editing capability for many, many aspects of color and exposure control than you'll find in the camera. Now, by default, the white balance menu appears when you press the unlabeled key beside the viewfinder. Slightly awkward if you're going to use it regularly. Uh, that can, of course, be customized with button dial settings, function settings. So if you don't use AEL or back button focus, those may be good alternatives if you're going to be a white balance jockey. Although the initial aim of setting white balance is accuracy, that may not be your ultimate goal. So let's get accurate. Then I'll leave creative decisions to you. For stills, auto white balance usually provides good results. There are three variations. In some low light situations, you may prefer to keep a somewhat more amber incandescent lighting tone to capture the mood. For this low light, low color temperature scene, here's how the three settings reproduce the image. The difference is mostly noticeable on the gray drape. Auto standard, auto white priority, auto ambience priority. Now, for many of you, those three variants may be enough. If you're shooting stills, particularly if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, the other settings may not provide much improvement. <laughs> After all, if there are issues, you could fix them in Lightroom. Using the other white balance presets requires you to remember that you've selected them and that you need to make an adjustment every time the scene or the lighting in the scene changes. While shooting a few frames with the wrong balance isn't the end of the world, it is often expletive inducing. The presets cover daylight, shade, three variations of fluorescent, incandescent, which although they are somewhat out of fashion, their characteristics are often emulated by LEDs and underwater. As we go through them again while looking at a color chart illuminated at 5600K, you'll have an idea of how much they can change the color rendition. Uh, oh, I heard you. What's 5600K? <laughs> K's, or Kelvins, are a unit of measure for temperature named in honor of William Thompson, 
Lord Kelvin after he was knighted, although it denotes temperature, according to the international system of units, it is not stated in degrees. And it is also used to refer to the color temperature of objects. And at this point, the subject becomes highly technical, so back to practical. The sun measures 5,778 kelvins. We generally use about 5,600 K for sunlight. In general, higher temperatures are more blue, lower are more amber. Uh, there are more ways to measure the quality of a light source. Not all lighting fixtures provide the same color distribution spectrum as the sun. Incandescent, fluorescent, and LED lights may emphasize some colors at the expense of others. Changing the white balance won't fix those kinds of color casts. And most modern LED studio lighting fixtures can be adjusted to a range of K settings, so I set mine to 5600. And I'm using manual focus and exposure for this scene and the standard Provia film simulation. 5600K lighting means the daylight setting should be relatively neutral, and for the rest, shade, counterintuitively a higher K value than sunlight, makes things illuminated with daylight look a little amber. The three fluorescent settings provide their own color casts. Incandescent, well, at least the soft white ones are generally rated as 2700 to 3000 K. That makes a sunlit scene look blue. Underwater is a unique environment. Colors filter out as you descend. Red goes first. I'd have gone underwater to show you, but you know, COVID. When I changed the lighting to 3200K, the daylight white balance makes the scene look amber, while the incandescent setting is now fairly neutral. Further white balance adjustments for any of the preset and custom settings are made using the shift panel. And there are two axes, from red to green, and from blue to yellow. As we learned in kindergarten, they are the opposite colors. Fujifilm does not indicate the unit of measure used here. The industry standard for these adjustments is myriads, a contraction of the term micro-reciprocal degree. Keeners are invited to check Wikipedia. By combining colors, you'll find magenta in the upper right, cyan in the upper left. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are the primary colors used in printing. Uh, you may well be intimidated by these adjustments, but if you've got some time to play, find a cooperative subject and take pictures while making these adjustments. Skin tones are anything but even, even on a single face, and what we think of as white skin is actually a wide variety of tones. But you may have a preference. So if you've accepted the variation in different cameras as their color science, with these adjustments, you can make your own color science. Uh, personally, I prefer just a little more red than Fujifilm standard Provia provides, for my skin tone anyway. More film simulations in a minute. Lights back to 5600. For a greater range of color temperature accuracy, use the K settings. And first note, the XS10's daylight setting isn't equivalent to 5600. It's more like the 5000K setting. The XS10 provides greater control than most cameras and manufacturers, although not a wider range. K can be set from 10,000 to 2,500. And most cameras are limited to 100K increments. Here, you can adjust to 10K increments. Now, if your light meter can measure color temperature to that level of accuracy, you're all set. Light meters, color meters actually, are expensive. If your budget is the XS10, you likely don't own one. I don't either, no matter how many times I put it on my birthday wish list. So, an overkill here. However, you can eyeball your way to a setting that pleases you. But in the absence of a color meter, 
the XS10 can capture a highly accurate custom white balance setting. There are three slots to save them. You'll need an 18% gray card. This is the back of my DSC Labs Chroma Selfie, but a sheet of white paper will do. Select the custom slot. Press right. Place the spot over the card or the card under the spot. Press the shutter, then OK to save. I wish Fujifilm would show the captured custom color temperature and shift adjustments as other manufacturers do. Now, again, you can make further shift adjustments as needed. Uh, yes, in the back. All right. What color temperature is flash? Generally, daylight, say, 5500K. Uh, check the manual. It will say this Godox is rated at 5600K. Now, if you have a color chart or a gray card, and you intend to make color adjustments while you're editing your files, capture a reference image with the card before shooting. Uh, then you'll have a neutral starting point for making further adjustments. Incidentally, 18% is the refractance value. It's a middle gray tone. So on histogram, it should appear at the midpoint. On a waveform, which is used as a video reference tool, about 55. Now, I don't often capture a custom white balance for stills, but I always do for video. Making white balance color adjustments while editing video, compensating for odd lighting, can be complex as we can't record raw video with the XS10, only compressed H.264. Now, the star of Fujifilm's color arsenal, film simulations. There are 12 different settings that are designed to emulate the color response of Fujifilm's analog film. And some films, like Acros, are still available. Add the three variants of the monochrome selections for a total of 18, as per Fujifilm's promotional materials. Press the Q key for background information and intention about each. But the best way to see what they're about is to scroll through, taking photos as you go. This is Provia, or Standard, Velvia, or Vivid, Astia, or Soft, and Classic Chrome, which was not a Fuji film. Three negative options, Pro, Standard, and Classic, all provide positive results. Eterna, a cinematic profile, and Eterna Bleach Bypass, high contrast and low saturation. Acros, with three color filter options, and Mono, also with three options. Last and least, Sepia. <laughs> However, while that is an interesting parade, I'm not sure it's fair or useful. If Velvia is designed for landscape and Astia for fashion portraits, a single test scene doesn't do either justice. And nor is a more technical view, but it may help you understand the different tunings that are applied. And this gets a little geeky. Feel free to skip ahead. Vector scopes, this is the one in Final Cut, my video editor, guide engineers setting up pro video devices like cameras and videotape playback. The six color squares indicate the exact position for a pure and fully saturated color, clockwise from nine o'clock yellow, red, magenta, blue, cyan, and green. These are the color bars output by the ATEM Mini, and they align perfectly with the vector scope. Those colors are also represented in this pocket chroma selfie chart, along with a grayscale step and three skin tone variants. Now, this is the digital version of the chart that shows how an ideal photo of the chart should look. And this is a properly exposed image taken with the XS10, using a custom white balance and the standard Provia simulation. Magenta, yellow, and green are less saturated. Cyan has rotated about 10 degrees, and visually, the darker skin tone chip has become even darker. 
if you are striving for color accuracy, matching the digital version to the image using the tools in your photo processing software should provide excellent results. And by excellent, I mean accurate. However, as I said, accuracy may not be your or Fujifilm's goal. I can scroll through each of these simulations, but although they do show that some are more or less saturated than others, and that some have a color skew in one direction or another, overall, I find little benefit in this technical analysis. The monochrome options have no vector scope display. And this technical analysis doesn't help me decide when one or other might be the appropriate choice. Mostly because I feel that your choice of film simulation is a creative decision, and it's quite dependent on the scene and your artistic intention. However, as it may be of interest to some of you, after the credits, you'll find 10 seconds of each simulation with the matching vector scope display. Uh, there is one vector scope detail, the line at about 11 o'clock, that represents the base red of skin tone. The blips along that line are the three skin tone chips. We may all have different skin tones, but the base color, our red blood, is the same. So if you're using a vector scope, that's an alignment detail worth noting. And one black and white secret, I find the sepia option to be a waste of space. Select black and white, and then go back to the menu's mono color tint panel. This provides a greater range of options to add an overall color tint to a black and white image. Now, for color images, there's the Q menu control to increase or decrease the saturation. This is plus four, the max, and minus four, the min. Exposure does have an impact on color. There's an apparent saturation increase, particularly for brighter objects, as you lower the light level. The color chrome effect increases the tonal range for saturated reds, greens, and yellows. And bright blue skies are enhanced with the chrome effect blue setting. Uh, watch the blue chip. Again, weak and strong. Tone curve settings also affect color reproduction. The D-range priority settings do too, particularly strong. If you have trouble choosing a film simulation, you can bracket three of them. Select your simulations in the camera menu, then select Film Sim Bracket from the Drive menu. With a single shutter release, three JPEG files are saved with different simulations. Brackets also available for white balance. Here, the selection is made on the Drive menu. Uh, the manual is very obscure here, so from this white balance, there's the plus three and minus three version. Using 5000K as the center point, one bracket's about 250K up and down, two brackets about 500K, with three about 800K difference between the shots. If you're uncertain about white balance, it's probably best to shoot raw and make the adjustments in editing. Uh, then, for RAW files, the XS10's playback mode can export JPEG files with alternate settings. You can select a film simulation, the color chrome settings, the white balance, the color saturation, and more. Now, this is non-destructive, so you can output as many versions of a RAW file as you like. <laughs> and there is, of course, one more thing. No. Two more things. Scene modes and filters. The scene modes, set from the mode dial and selected from the camera menu, do make color adjustments. But if you thought selecting portrait locked you into Astia, nope, you're still free to select your own. Filters follow the same method. Again, here are samples to show you. In filter mode, Film simulations are no longer available, and the left-hand dial selects the filter. Settings like miniature do more than just color. 
but mostly these are color effects, and they're limited. For example, there's no opportunity to make adjustments to the partial color selection, and strangely, these cannot be added using playback raw conversion. I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, please let me know in the comments what I overlooked. I do read and respond to all relevant questions and civil comments. Uh, getting the right color. Understanding the XS10's options takes practice. Understanding what it can do and how settings change your images will help you find and refine your creative vision, helping you to create images with impact. You can improve your skills by making lots of images with all of these settings. <laughs> there's no right and there's no wrong. You won't break anything. So keep going until you drain your battery and fill up your card. Uh, practice before you get to your daughter's first football game or your weekend in Paris. If you enjoy my videos, I'd be honored to have you as a subscriber. Just click the button below or you could click the join button and become a member. Uh, membership perks include a private email address where members are whitelisted so you can correspond directly with me. But subscribers need not worry. No content will be behind a paywall and I will read and reply to your comments. <laughs> Please choose the option that best suits your needs. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe.